Congratulations, you've reached a new level in your heels dance journey and you're finally ready to buy a quality pair of heels. But you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed on what type of shoe to get or what type of shoe to bring to class. Don't worry, I got you. Here's your ultimate heels dance shoe guide. Before we continue, I think you should subscribe. Thanks. Hey Shapers, welcome back to Shaping Sarah, a space where you can get motivated on all things dance, fitness, and personal development. In this video, we'll be discussing everything you need to know on how to pick the perfect heels dance shoe. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced dancer, this video can really help you make an informed decision on your next pair of heel shoes. I'm actually going to show you different styles and we'll compare them. We'll talk about what's good, what's bad, and watch till the end of this video so I can give you some maintenance tips to make your heel shoes last way longer. And by the way, if you're watching this and you're about to buy your first pair, congratulations. This is an investment that you're making towards your dance journey, towards yourself. You're putting that towards your growth and that should be celebrated, okay? Anyways, let's get started. And today's comment shout out goes to McKay K. Lamb who says, so glad you keep making your vids. Love seeing you dance on IG. You're living little girl's black dreams of dancing on stage with your afro. It took me years to get to this point where I genuinely love my natural hair and I love showing it to the world. Go watch my latest video to know all about my journey to loving my 4C hair and how dance contributed to that self-love. First thing I want to mention before even getting into all of this, start with what you have. I always tell this to people, always start with what you have. And this applies to anything in life. You don't need the perfect pair of heels to start training in heels. Don't let that be the reason why you're not starting or why you're delaying that process. With anything in life, you always got to start somewhere, right? Figure out if this is something you want to keep doing consistently. And then when you feel ready to invest, then you graduate, then you move on to a better shoe. So don't feel bad if you can't buy a professional heel stance shoe right now. That's fine. That's okay. I'd much rather you start with what you have at home, get yourself comfortable, maybe even start with no heels. I don't know. I'm gonna show you what I started with. Girl, the heel that I started with, okay? I went to spring. If you guys remember spring, does that, does that store still exist? I don't know if it still exists. But I went to spring and I caught me a $40 pair and that's all I could afford at the time. So it was this and I will cherish this pair forever. You gotta keep your first pair. The first pair you ever had, you have to keep it because this is memories right there. So I started with this heel, but it was very uncomfortable. Like I danced in this for six months before I was able to progress to something else. I was not stable at all, but this is all I had. So I was gonna make this work. So now that we have all of that out of the way, let's get into the nitty gritty of the perfect heel dance shoe. So let's start off with the front of the shoe and let's center a little bit on the toes. So when you see a closed toe shoe like this one, it is not the ideal one. And I'll explain why. Because when you have closed toe shoe, your toes are kind of squished like this, which makes it really restrictive. Usually pointed toe shoes are not very flexible. So when a shoe is not flexible at the front, I'm, I'm struggling really hard to try. Ow, what? Uh, I'm so clumsy. It's really hard for you to point your toes. And you're gonna hear in heels dance classes, point your toes, point your toes, not pointing your toes. It's important to point your toes, but it's very hard to point your toes when you have a closed toe shoe because it's just not flexible enough. It doesn't provide any space for you to really point your toes. When I first started dancing in these, you know, my instructors were always like, point your toes, point your toes, point your toes. I'm like, I am pointing my toes. And I was, I was doing the motion of pointing my toes, but because the shoe was so rigid, it would just end up looking the same. It wouldn't move. It would look like this. Pointed toe would look more like this, but mine was just looking like this. And I was so frustrated because I was like, I'm pointing my toes. What do you want from me? Like, but it's not, it's not you, baby. It's not you. It's the shoe. Sometimes it's just not you. It is the shoe. And that is why I'm here to give you all these tips. Now let's look at another type of toe situation. So this one is a very open toe, not ideal for heel stance class. Now your toes are not like this, but they're like this. They're just like out in the open and just, you know, living wild and free. We don't want wild and free toes. We want contained toes. We want toes that are well supported. You want something that can really hug your toes enough, not too much to where it's completely closed, but not too open either. You want a nice soft middle. So these type of shoes are the soft middle. So as you can see here, you have some, containment in the toes, okay? It's not fully open, but it's also not fully closed. The fact that you have this little opening here, it allows you to 
really point your toes. It gives you more flexibility and more range to point your toes. So this type of shoe here is the one I'm gonna have as an example throughout the video. It is my favorite type of shoe. And these are Berju shoes. So these are professional dance shoes and I have a discount code if you want to purchase it with a discount. You can check out with code Shaping Sarah. I'll have the link in the description. Um, these are gonna give you a little bit of a discount because they are expensive. Like I said, it's an investment, but this is something that you would have for at least four years. Honestly, if you take good care of them, you will have them for at least four years. They will be your bestie. They will be your emotional support heels that will be there for you at every class, at every performance, at everything you have to do with these heels, they will be there for you. Ankle support is super, super important in a heel stance shoe. If there's one thing you get out of this video, it is ankle support. It prevents injuries and it gives you more stability in your move. If you don't have proper ankle support, your ankle can snap at any moment. It is very unsafe. It is very dangerous, especially for beginners. Always, always opt for a shoe with ankle support. So I'll go by process of elimination, starting with this lovely shoe here. This is just a strap. So this is not ankle support whatsoever. It's literally just a strap. Um, it is also very uncomfortable with this little, you know, buckling thing here going on. It's really not the ideal shoe that you want to have, especially if you're a beginner, just because it's it's dangerous like when you're experienced when you trained your ankles properly you trained the balls of your foot properly then you can start being risky with the heel and you can start wearing whatever heel you want but this kind of heel is really just not ideal for beginners because you don't have any ankle support whatsoever now this kind of heel girl don't even start don't even if i see you come to class with this i'm sending your ass home i'm just kidding but this type of heel is not ideal for beginners okay leave this at home please first of all like i said it's closed toe we don't want that second of all there's absolutely no ankle support whatsoever. I know that some, uh, you know, more experienced dancers like to experience with this kind of heel and that is fine. Like I said, once you're experienced, you have trained your ankles. Your ankles are much stronger now. Your legs are stronger. The balls of your feet are more, they're trained for, you know, heels dancing. So you're able to experiment with these and that's fine. You are trained for the dance style. So you understand where to put your weight and everything. But if you're a beginner or even an intermediate, please do not wear these heels. I beg you, I beg you, I do not want to see these in class. Now, what, like I said in the beginning, I started with a sock heel. So for my ankle, it was kind of this socky material. And this material is good. Would I say it's ideal? Would I say it's the best? No, not at all. Um, yes, it's cute, yes, it's hot, but over time, the sock will get stretchier and stretchier and stretchier. So you will have less and less ankle support the more you wear these shoes. Is it the, my favorite kind of shoe? No, but is it something that is obviously much better than the two other options I showed you? Absolutely. If you wanna go for this, by all means do go for this. Just know that with time you'll have less ankle support. Keep in mind that having proper ankle support is really going to help you feel way more secure in a heel. And also the right ankle support is gonna give you so much more range of motion. So when you have more range of motion, you have more freedom in your movements, you're able to do different tricks. So it's really recommended to have good ankle support. So the ideal version of ankle support would be something as such. Like your entire ankle is covered, um, whether it's with this material or whether it's with a meshy material, as you can see, you have some laces at the front. So the laces are really good because you're able to secure the heel however you want. You have flexibility in how much you want to secure it and or how little you want to secure it. With this type of heel, girl, you have one option. You can't really customize this at all. This, you have one option, you slip it on and that's it. But this one, you can slip it on, but you can also fix the laces. Um, there's also a strap in the back to, to secure your ankle even more. So this is the staple, girl. This is it. This is it. Hey. Oh, you're gonna be in the video. Here you go, interrupting again. <laughs> Close it, please. Now that we covered the ankles and the toes, let's get into another very, very important part of your heel, which is the actual heel. So let's start with talking about the thickness of the heel. This is a chunky heel, this is a stiletto heel. When you're looking for your ideal heel, you want something that is light, something that you can pick up off the floor very easily. So when you have a chunky heel, naturally it's heavier, so it makes it very hard to lift your heel up fast. This one is very light, it is very skinny, it's very thin, so you're able to pick it up off the floor very easily. So I always recommend a stiletto heel. In the heels class, you're not just walking in a heels. You're doing floor work, you're doing tricks. You're doing crazy stuff in a heels class 
especially when you get a little bit more advanced. So it's really important for you to have a heel that you're able to be very free with. It's not a heel that you wear and you feel like there's a, an extra weight on you. It's literally as if you're putting on a sock. It's like there's not much weight on your foot. Some moves you can't even perform in this heel at all because the heel just gets in the way. Make sure you have a stiletto heel, okay? I'm sorry if you hear noise in the background. Malik just came home and he's gonna, he's very loud, so he's gonna make a lot of noise. I have to deal with it, so you gonna have to deal with it too. Now let's talk about the height of the heel. The height that I always recommend is from 3.5 inch to 4 inch. Nothing less and nothing more. The standard heel height is 4 inches. So it's really up to you if you want to start with the standard. It's gonna be hard, by the way. If you decide to start with the standard, it's going to be hard. You're gonna have to adjust. It's gonna be a big difference from your foot walking on a flat surface versus your foot being angled. But it's a difference that, you know, you're trained on how to walk in a heel, you're trained on how to dance in a heel. So it's up to you. Do you wanna start with the standard four inch heel and just get used to it right away? Or would you rather start with a 3.5 inch? Um, I don't have my 3.5 here, it's in my car. But you can either start with a 3.5 inch and then work your way up to four. You're still gonna learn the heel technique. You're still gonna learn how to walk in a heel as if it's a four inch. It's just gonna be a little bit easier to execute certain moves. Both of them are hot, by the way. They're not, not one is hotter than the other. They're both hot, they're both sexy. It's really up to you and your training style, how you wanna get started in your journey, how you feel most, most comfortable in this journey. So I started with a four inch for about six months, then I transitioned to 3.5 and I had 3.5 for the vast majority of my journey. And up until now, I just recently got back to four inch heels, but 3.5s, I loved 3.5. I had so much more ability to pick up on things a little bit faster because the heel was a little bit shorter. But now that I'm more experienced and I know a lot of things and I'm trained for it, then I'm back to my four inch and I feel amazing in my four inches too. So it's really up to you what you wanna start with. The only thing I'm gonna ask you not to do is not to go below 3.5 or above four inch. If you go below 3.5, your foot is not gonna be angled enough for you to execute certain heels moves. And if you get more than four inch, if you get 4.2 inch, girl, it's overkill. You just, you just wasting your time. Like don't get 4.2 inch, especially if you're a beginner or intermediate, it's just overkill at this point. And honestly, low key dangerous. So now let's get into the bottom of the shoe, okay? Girl, do not, don't do it, don't do it. This is really dangerous for several reasons. Obviously, this is a pole shoe, by the way. I This is my first he, uh, pair of pole shoes, and I love them so much for pole. They're sexy, they feel great, but it's for pole. It is not for heels. The point of heels is for your foot to really be in contact with the floor as much as possible, and it will give you so much more stability while you're dancing. This is no stability at all. You have zero contact with the floor because there's such a big platform, and it can be really dangerous for your ankle, there's like literally no ankle support. So this is not what you're looking for in a heels dance class. This is amazing for pole though. If this was a pole shoe video, I would recommend this, but not for heels dance. What you really want is a shoe. I'm gonna show my red pair now. <laughs> what you really want is a shoe that lays flat on the floor so that you can really feel, you know, the contact of the floor a little bit better. It'll give you more stability, more balance, more everything. Now I wanna get into the sole of the shoe. Okay, this is dirty. Don't, don't at me. I dance a lot, this is dirty. But this this is the, the, the bottom of the shoe, that's gonna be the sole. I'll talk about the different types of soles that you can find in heels dance shoes. When you're purchasing a heels dance shoe, do not make my mistake. Please be very, very cautious and be aware of what sole you're buying. If you buy the wrong sole, you might not be able to use it at all depending on what you're using it for. Make sure before you check out for any Berju shoes or any shoes in general, you always make sure to read and see what kind of sole is at the bottom. So let's talk about what are the different kind of soles. So the first kind of sole is a suede sole. So typically, used in Latin dance styles and not so much in heels dance styles. The one that is the most often used in heels dance style is, is the smooth street sole. So it looks like this. This is kind of the material of it. It's flat on the bottom. This can be used inside and outside. So that's why I recommend it the most. I recommend a smooth street sole that you can use on all surfaces. This is a great type of sole because if you wanna do any spins, you can easily do them. It's slippery enough. And if you wanna have more friction on the bottom, you can. You can wear them outside and no friction on the bottom. And lastly, another common type of sole that you can get is a rubber street sole. Girl, I made this mistake of buying a rubber street sole. Please don't make my mistake. Please don't make my mistake. I didn't 
properly look at, you know, this type of sole that I was buying. It had a rubber street sole and it's not ideal for indoor dancing. What they usually use it for is for outdoor dancing. So let's say people are performing outside or they're performing on a, on a big stage and they really want to make sure their dancers have like a good grip on the floor, then they'll have a rubber street sole. But taking a class in rubber street sole is do not recommend. First of all, you can't really spin on those. If you do try to spin, you might be able to, you might injure your joints, you might injure your knees. So don't try to do any kind of turn in a rubber street sole. But yeah, do not recommend. Now let's get into the sizes. How can you choose the size of the shoe that you want? That definitely depends obviously on what size you are in a regular, you know, street shoe. For me, I wear eight to 8.5s in a regular street shoe, but depending on the style of heel shoes that I decide to buy, I might have to size down 0.5 or size up 0.5. I'll read reviews on the style of shoe that you want. These are Berju Sierras. Let's say you want Berju Sierras. Go in the Berju Sierra, look at the reviews, go on Instagram, look at people who have Berju Sierra, ask them for their opinions. Did they size up? Did they stay true to size? Second of all, you need to know whether you're gonna be wearing the shoe with a sock or without a sock. I'll talk a little bit more later about the difference of wearing a sock and not wearing a sock. But if you're deciding to wear a sock on your shoe, that definitely means you're gonna have to either size up 0.5 or get true to size. Could have gotten a Sierra size eight, but because I know that I wear my heels with socks, I decided to go 0.5 so that I can wear those socks and I feel I still feel snug in my heels. But if you're not gonna wear a sock, then maybe you would have went with a size eight and it would fit you perfectly and that's it, that's all. In general though, let's say you're like shaping, I don't feel like doing all that research, like just tell me yes or no, do I get my size or not? In general, I would recommend to get a 0.5 above your size, um, but this is a very general thing. Like it's, it might not be the case for whatever, for the style of shoe that you want to get. But if you get a 0.5 up, it would be better than if you get a 0.5 down, because if you get a 0.5 down, it might be too tight on you. And that's a lot more uncomfortable than if you get a 0.5 up and then you just wear a sock so that it can snug you better. So that's my general advice. Either get your actual size or get 0.5 up. Oh, and also if you get Berju's, they do have a sizing chart and a sizing video on their website. So it can really, really help you make a good decision on the size that you want. Um, so that's why I really love Berju's as well. Now let's talk about the color, okay? First of all, you need a black shoe. And I like this one a lot because it has different textures on it. A shoe that has different textures on it is always Ugh, mwah, sexy. I like mesh on my heels because you can see a little bit of the foot if you have a mesh. So it's kind of hot, you know? And then if you already have a black one, perfect. Girl, go get yourself a colorful one. I personally had to get the red one because when you, get, when you wear a red shoe, that's just a staple. You walk in the room with red shoes, that's it. All eyes on your feet, okay? I think also a lot of people get nude. I know Berju has a nude line that you can go explore with, with different shades of color. So that's really cool. I would always go with definitely a black. Then you should get a color one. And then you should get a nude. If you have those three ones, amazing. When I get my fresh pair of shoes, what do I do? And I want to make this very clear. All these tips are great, but at the end of the day, it's a heel. It's gonna hurt, it's uncomfortable. After some time, if you wear it for hours, it hurts. A heel is a heel. It's never going to be like super comfortable to wear for hours. It's a heel. It's an unnatural position for your foot. So don't expect to get a heel and expect that if you wear it for hours and hours, your feet are gonna feel amazing. No, but there are ways to make it a little bit more comfortable and that will come with wear and tear. The more you wear your shoe, the more it's gonna mold to your foot and the more it's gonna feel a little bit more comfortable. So when you first buy your shoe, it's gonna be very, you know, it's still gonna be a little bit rigid. So what I would recommend, the first thing I do when I buy a shoe is first of all, I retie the laces in the way that I like to. When they come to you in the mail, they're kind of, you know, laced up a certain way. I like to have the laces go inward. I don't know if it makes sense. I'll try to insert a video of how I retie my laces, but I like for the lace to go inward and that makes it easier. So when it gets to the top, I can tuck it in easily. The next thing that I do is I destroy it. So what I'll do is I'll just really try to bend it, bend it as much as possible, especially at the ball of the foot, just to get it super, super flexible. And the goal is to really break down the material so that it kind of molds to my foot a little bit better. And the third thing that some people do is that they scratch the bottom of the shoe. So this one is already scratched up because I already start, I already wore them quite a few times, but when it's brand new, it looks like this, you know, you, some people like to scratch it up. So let's say they'll take maybe some keys or they'll go outside on the concrete and just like scruff it up so that it can have more friction. It can be a little bit less slippery. 
Last but not least, let's finally get into some maintenance tips to make sure your shoes last much longer. So buying a heel shoes is an investment. So you want to make sure you're making, you're getting the most out of your investment, right? So if you're treating your shoe with respect, if you're giving it the attention that it needs, if you're giving it the love that it needs, then it will thank you in return and it will be good with you for years down the line. Number one, keep them in the bag that you purchased them in. So these are Berger shoes. Berger's come in a cute little bag. You know, you can wear it as a little backpack. You know, a little, little cute thing right there. Look at this, look at how cute this is. This is cute, you just walk in your dance class with your little backpack, you know you got your bare shoes. Keep your heels in that bag when you're not using them. This will prevent them from collecting a bunch of dust from outside and any you know environmental factors that might damage the material. Another tip to maintain your heels is to wear socks. So I choose to wear my heels with socks because it prevents odor. If you're just wearing heels in bare feet, your feet will stink. Your feet will sweat, your feet will stink up the shoe. Your shoe's gonna stink, it's gonna smell like dog, poo poo, caca, ass, everything. It's gonna smell really bad like but I'm just saying if you want to make your heel last really long um, wear socks for me personally when I wear socks I have so much more grip the shoe is tighter on my foot and I feel so much more free and balanced I feel more free and more stable in my heel when I wear socks but that's just a personal preference but when sweat gets onto the shoe it gets onto the laces things start melting things start looking different colors things start smelling funky if you would rather wear your shoe without a sock that's totally fine but just keep in mind that it will stink after some time another tip to maintain your heels is you can use heel caps. These can protect the tips of your heels. Heel caps are small little rubber things that you can put on the tip of your heel to prevent them from getting worn down or getting scruffed, but you would put it on the tip right here. As you're dancing, it stays in place. And it also protects the floor of whatever you're dancing on. I know some dance studios don't want heels dancers because it messes with the, it messes up the floor. Some dance studios require heel caps. When I first wore these, I thought that it would change the way I dance. I thought that it would interfere with my dancing or anything, and it really didn't. If it's the perfect size for the, your heel, then it's not gonna fall off. It's not gonna feel any type of way. You're not even gonna realize that you have heel caps on. It comes in different sizes, small, medium, large. I'll leave some Amazon links at the bottom. But the problem with this is if you don't have the right size, so if it doesn't fit super snug to your heel, then it will fall off and it might actually be dangerous. You might lose it or you might trip on it or anything. So that's the only con. You have to make sure that it's really, you see how like I'm kind of struggling to put it on. It's not gonna move from here. Now, if you don't wanna wear heel caps, it's okay. You don't have to, but keep in mind that this tip will wear off with time. It's, it's inevitable. It'll bend a little bit. This one is not as straight. If you can see, it's a little bit curvy. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but then this one is very brand new and it's very straight. It will wear off and then it's gonna mess up with your balance to fix it. So what I would recommend is let's say every six months or so, or whenever you notice that it starts bending, you, have, you just have to go to the people who take care of shoes or like fix shoes, I don't know. I don't know what they're called. They're gonna replace the tip and usually it costs about 20 bucks, no more than that. Very easy and it'll be a brand new tip of the heel. Another tip is if you have multiple shoes like me, it's really good for you to rotate them. So one day I'll wear my red ones, one day I'll wear my black ones. The more I rotate them, the more I avoid having like excessive tear on only one of them. It's, it's also fun to alternate heels. My next tip is to only wear them indoors. If you look at this shoe, it's a really sexy shoe. I can wear these like if I'm going out to a restaurant or if I'm going out with friends, I can wear these. But these are my dance shoes. This is my investment towards my dance journey. So I do not wear these outside of dance class or outside of dance training. I keep these indoor only because I'm trying to maintain the longevity of these. So I would recommend you do the same. If you invest in professional dance shoes, make sure you're only wearing them to dance. It'll stop you from the excessive tearing that can happen when it's outdoors. If it's raining, you really want to keep these indoors so that you can maintain the longevity as long as you can. And my last tip is one that I do not even do myself, but I should. You have to regularly clean your shoes with a soft cloth. Um, maybe just a little bit of water or maybe just a little bit of dish soap or something like just very light just to pass through you know any dirt or debris that you might find on your shoe do this regularly so that you can have you know a nice clean shoe like I said when you take care of your shoe when you show it some love when you show it attention it'll thank you in return do these things and trust me your heel will thank you later so that is it for today guys this is the ultimate guide to how to pick a heel shoe I hope this gave you some value thank you so much for watching the next video I want you to watch is how to stop stressing about your goals. I made a whole video on how to stop stressing about your future, about your goals, how to have an abundance mindset. So make sure to check that out. I think you would really enjoy that. And that's it. See you in the next video. Bye.